While Nintendo has franchises like Mario, The Legend of Zelda, Animal Crossing, and Pokemon, and Sony PlayStation has the likes of Horizon Zero Dawn, The Last of Us, Gran Turismo, and Uncharted, Xbox has Halo. Okay, maybe that's a little bit of an over-exaggeration. Xbox does have some great franchises like Forza, Gears of War, and we're definitely seeing them make a push in the right direction by introducing new IPs and reusing some of their older IPs that they've been kind of sitting on for a while. But when you look through the history of all of the franchises that Xbox actually owns that they're not using, it definitely might make you raise an eyebrow just to, why aren't you using these franchises? They're literally sitting on a gold mine of games that they could be making. So today we're taking a look at some of the abandoned game franchises that Xbox owns the rights to. Let's go ahead and jump into it. And of course, you can't think Xbox without thinking Viva Pinata. Yeah, this game was everywhere during the initial release of the Xbox 360 and kind of was advertised as one of the staple must-have games if you were an Xbox 360 owner back in the day. At the time, this game utilized some beautiful visuals that really gave players the chance to feel like they were playing on next-generation hardware. And honestly, while the game was more aimed for children, it was kind of fun. But looking at the brand recognition associated with Viva Pinata alone, should be reason enough for Microsoft to renew interest in using this franchise in one way or another, even if it was just a simple Game Pass game that let players jump in and have some sort of nostalgic feelings towards it, or even better, really show off the graphical capabilities of Project Scarlet when that comes around and bring Viva Pinata back to life. Okay, this next one's definitely gonna seem like a very obvious choice, but Banjo-Kazooie! Now is the best time possible for Microsoft to renew interest in this franchise franchise because first of all, Rare should have some sort of freed up time because they finally finished development on Sea of Thieves. Banjo-Kazooie is coming to Super Smash Brothers, which means a ton of people are going to be experiencing these characters for the first time. There's obviously been a huge demand for a back to basics game similar to Banjo-Kazooie as Banjo-Kazooie nuts and bolts did not satisfy the same itch of Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie back in the day. And we've even seen games like Ukulele and A Hat in Time which were inspired by the old N64 era of platforming games that have done really well and were really fun to play. So it's time for Xbox to go ahead and give fans what they've been wanting for a long time and finally give us the third Banjo-Kazooie game that everyone really has been waiting for. Actually, in a perfect world, I would love for them to finally release Banjo-Kazooie 3 and then go ahead and release Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts 2 after we finally get the main platforming game. Nuts and Bolts on its own was an okay game. It just wasn't a good Banjo-Kazooie game, so make it its own thing, but give fans what they want first. Another rare IP is Perfect Dark, which was one of my favorite games on the Nintendo 64 when I was a kid. I was definitely too young to play this game, but that didn't stop me. Okay, take the legacy that Goldeneye had created back in the day and pair that up with a really interesting futuristic story of being a spy, a strong female protagonist in Joanna Dark, stealth operation missions in the first person perspective, and a ton of aliens that just kind of show up halfway through the story and take over the plot and it's so cool and just really interesting how they kind of melded this narrative together in having really short levels but definitely took players into different experiences and just let you experience a first person game differently than anything that had been done at the time. Honestly though even if they decided to go a more generic first person shooter route with a sequel to Perfect Dark if they just keep the story elements and obviously the amazing soundtrack that Perfect Dark's known for and just have have somewhat of tight gameplay, the game will be fun and people will love it and it definitely will be a better experience than some other Xbox games they've put out in past years like ReCore or Crackdown 3. And while we're at it, we really can't forget about Conker either. Now Conker hasn't been dead as long as some of these other characters as he was a part of some weird promotion Xbox did, showing off the redesign of Conker that no one ever asked for. And I think they tried to use him to market Project Spark, but no one cared about that because it wasn't a Conker game. So maybe it's time that we give Conker the sequel that he's really deserved. Well, at its core, Conker is also just another 3D platformer, and we get Xbox probably doesn't want to just make 3D platformers, but this is kind of a character you can change things up a bit. This character acts more as a parody of movies and video games more than just a regular standard platformer and uses a lot of humor along the ways. I feel like at this point, there's a ton of games that you can make some satirical commentary on and use Conker as a medium for doing that. I'd love to see Conker's 
take on things like microtransactions, unfinished games, remakes, and just a ton of other things that are so commonplace in the gaming industry that I feel like they could really make a self-aware game using Conquer to just kind of poke fun at all of these things, and that would be an amazing game to see. Moving away from rare titles, I'd really also like to see some of these smaller games that Microsoft and Xbox own make some sort of a comeback too. I really like just some of the smaller scale projects that they kind of threw out back in the day, like Splosion Man and Misplosion Man. Sometimes it's fun to kick back and play some puzzle games that have explosions involved in it, and that's kind of fun. Another great game they could also bring back is the Black and White series. The Black and White series was really unique as it was pretty much two games where you just get to play as a god, creating different types of worlds and kind of helping or hurting the people that live in the worlds, and it's kind of an interesting concept. And with Xbox making such a push to have keyboard support and make their way onto PC, it feels like this would be a great game to kind of jump on that train and they could really see a nice black and white 3 get some pretty great critical acclaim. Now I know there's a push going on already to make a spiritual successor by some of the heads who made the original game, but it'd also be nice to see one more in line with what the other two had done in the past and have a good budget associated with it. Along the same lines of just kind of the melding of consoles and PCs together, Age of Empires is another franchise that really could use a new entry. Now, we do know that they are doing a remastered version of Age of Empires 2, which is awesome, and there's rumors circling around that Microsoft has silently put together a studio that would be working on future installments, so we're not going to talk about this one for too long, but in general, we would be hyped to see Age of Empires make a return in a better and greater way than what we had in the first entries. This next one is one that really needs to happen because I would be so hyped, but I would love to see a Crimson Skies either reboot or new entry in the series release on Xbox. Okay, if you haven't played Crimson Skies before, think of pirates, but instead you fly around in airplanes and it's this kind of mash of ideas and it's really unique and it has the diesel punk genre. It kind of was one of the first things to use that type of design in a game. And while the original Crimson Sky games had pretty primitive graphics, I just wonder what they could do nowadays with the graphical capabilities in 2019 and early 2020. It'd be really cool to see they could make this really alive and rich world. And even if they take maybe some of the assets from games like Flight Simulator and kind of refine the gameplay a bit and let it be more action packed, they could make something really cool that'd be fun for players to actually get to play. Also, this one, we're not too sure if this is something we actually need or not, but it'd be really funny to see a new Blinks game come out. The main reason this is included in the list is because Blinks, if you didn't know, originally was intended to be the mascot for Xbox. Yeah, it was going to be the Sonic to Sega or the Mario to Nintendo. We were supposed to have Blinks, but of course Halo ended up being way more popular, so Master Chief got that role, rightfully so, and Blinks kind of got forgotten about after its sequel in 2004. Does this game really need to come back? No, not at all. Would it be cool if it did? Maybe. Maybe it'd be awful, but it'd be funny to see a new Blinks game in this era of gaming. And lastly, this is another one that a lot of people are going to agree with, but Fable needs to come back. Fable was one of the most popular franchises on Xbox besides Halo for a really long time. All of the Fable games were pretty well received, and when Xbox started pivoting and going into other territories, it seems like Fable really fell off. There was a Kinect game that was supposed to be really big that never really got to see any great potential, and there was a huge MMO that was practically finished being flighted in an early alpha build, and then the game just got cancelled out of nowhere, which is really rare to see where games are completely done and then just get scrapped like that. Sure, the game wasn't perfect and it had some flaws as far as MMOs are concerned, but at the same time, those probably could have been fixed sometime either with a delayed release or just after the game saw some sort of limited release. They could have probably fixed things up the same way other MMOs have, like ESO or other types of games that aren't necessarily MMOs but have a lot of similar features like Destiny. And it's a real shame that we haven't seen at least a main Fable game in all these years. Fable 4 would be something that a lot of people would get behind, but it does have to be done well for it to be received 
great in the first place. But I would love to see Xbox put the resources behind a team that's passionate in reviving the Fable franchise and give players Fable 4 finally to play and experience because Fable's kind of one of those games that get people to sign up for a specific platform or to download the Xbox app. It's one of those games that's exclusive that brings people in and it's definitely one we would like to see back again. Now let us know what you guys think. There's obviously a few more properties that Xbox owns that we didn't have time to get to today but we'd love to hear what you're thinking. Leave a comment down below and be sure to subscribe with notifications on for more videos just like this. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video. Bye guys.